Welcome to the World Parks Congress and welcome to the largest island on the planet. It's, um, if we're talking about oceans, Australia is a great place to have a World Parks Congress. We're surrounded by water and, and the oceans and the marine theme is such an integral part of the World Parks Congress. Um, yesterday, the first day of the Congress started with the Varka boats coming across the Pacific Ocean from Cook Islands and Samoa and New Zealand and Fiji to Australia. And how symbolic is that about the importance of the ocean? The, the traditional canoes sailed down Sydney Harbour as, as a fantastic start to, to the World Parks Congress. We're here at Sydney with over 5,000 people to really talk about serious things around the future of the planet and the importance of oceans. I think what will what will come out of here will be momentous. Um, there'll be some fantastic ideas and solutions that will feed up into the promise of Sydney that will have uh, repercussions and results for how we deal with oceans and how we work together for years and years to come. So. The oceans are such an important thing and it's so great to have Oceans Plus here at the World Parks Congress. This session was to talk about the MPAs in uh, French MPAs, its diversity, and uh, which has been uh, connected in a forum uh, where we met every year to, together, from ice to coral uh, reefs and uh, from uh, Mediterranean biogeographical uh, region or Indian region. It was to tell how we, we can do this informally. And the audience was there. Uh, we were not surprised, but it was okay. And uh, for example, we have been talking about the uh, underwater trails. Underwater trails can be made uh, in, uh, in French NPS inside the forum by exchanges or in other, other countries. For example, we have been uh, working in the uh, in, uh, Indian Ocean, for, in the Mediterranean Basin, in anti French Antilles because of our exchanges of experiences. This is one of, one of the things we, uh, we have been talking about. One of the questions was about, uh, for example, about the, the climate change. And uh, the forum is one tool to have a response to that, for example, to measure the temperature. Inside the forum, we have several MPAs in, in many uh, bio-geographical uh, 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 regions. And uh, we can, in the forum, share our method. But for example, measuring temperature, it's, it's very simple. And as we do it, uh, uh, everyone, we, we made the link with the scientists also, and this is this is uh, the, the aim of the forum, to, to, to link together inside the MPAs and other partners, like scientists, for example. One of the most critical things is, is to think carefully about how access to reef environments, nearshore environments, and fisheries, how, those, how, those, um, how access is controlled or governed. I mean, governance is a really key factor and, and here at this conference really for the first time there's a huge presence from local and indigenous people from around the world who are struggling to manage their own interactions with coral reef environments or other oceanic environments in the face of huge interests from large corporations and other and you know countries who are interested in exploiting those same resources so i think local governance is really key and uh, all of us partnering and, and, and listening to local governance systems is really critical. I'm studying conservation leadership. My research is in New Zealand working with the Maui's Dolphin Protection. And uh, by working with different stakeholders, we can get different perspectives of uh, who is involved and what it takes to protect uh, not only one marine species, but an entire ecosystem within that area. We have to work together to both protect the marine species to protect and address issues like marine pollution and other issues relating to the marine environment. Uh, we need to work together. SPREP is very happy to be a close partner of the French Marine Protected Area Agency. We run a number of programs in the Pacific Ocean.
four of us had a dream to row across the ocean. We decided that we wanted to row from Africa to the Americas. I honestly believe that if you work hard and you challenge yourself, you will be happier. I was stampeded by thousands of dolphins. To have something that you see that you've never even imagined and to experience it, I mean, that's the reason I, I go out there. Something special happens when you get out in nature and when you have an extended period of time out in nature. In a boat in the middle of the ocean, it happens so fast. And so it was day 73 and we hit uh, what's known as a rogue wave. And a rogue wave is four times the size of the surrounding uh, waves in the, in the ocean. In a moment, I was thrown from the boat and I was floating. We got everything we could from the boat and threw it in the life raft. You were on your own and nobody can come to help you for miles and miles away. This one seabird decided that we would come check us out and he's looking at us and it's just fluttering. The ultimate representation of peace and it gave us hope. I think we should protect the oceans because if we spill oil in them, all the animals will go extinct. Yeah, we should protect the oceans. It's an important part of our ecosystem and without it, a lot of things would get screwed up. I think it's very important for the ecosystem too. We only know 10% about what's going on in them. The main thing people don't do and don't think of is letting their garbage go. Like plastic bags is the worst. They let the plastic bags go, they will get caught in the air, and when it lands in the ocean or in any sea, if the movement of the bag in the water looks like a live fish, so other fish will come up and they will eat that, and that it will kill them. It'll get stuck in their gills and it will kill them. Recycle more, just like, so then all of this doesn't go back into the ocean. Recycle more and be more knowledgeable about what's happening in the oceans. Recycling, that's a big one, and if you are at a beach or an ocean of some sort, make sure to pick up all your garbage when you leave and don't leave it laying around. Sitting up, grinning with a little yawning Birds chirping outside Butterflies flying by I know it's gonna be a bright, nice day People who live in the city are getting gritty And they're paying attention to their emissions A carbon footprint, a global cooking Give it a look, not anything that we should Cut up in that one Fund is a, is a community and uh, the community has a tool we developed, we create. It's a, it's a platform, internet platform, uh, ecofund.org, where everybody can uh, uh, support projects for the protection of, of the environment. So we put the light on the champions, local champions, who do things, concrete things to protect the environment, regenerate it and manage it sustainably. Uh, so we put the light on these champions and then we, we, we allow people to, to support it by crowdfunding and but also to comment it or to join their forces to what we do about information about those projects. So it's like a co-working participative and very didactic process where everybody can help and bring something. For, uh, for the protection of the environment. Those champions are everywhere, but this is also you and I, because I can just give five euros in the, in the EcoFund platform and sort of be a champion because I do something. This famous prophecy uh, is why we are here, invited by FIBA, and um, it's a cool project. We co-produced with Fabrice, which is, who is a uh, photographer. He had the idea of taking a series of pictures, of photos, that represent plagues of environment, destruction of environment. The picture is about the Bedou and in Dakar, one of the most popular and beautiful beach in the world 20 years ago. And now it's just a disaster because of the industrial pollution. Actually, this project focused on what an industry uh, the damage the, the environment and 
how can, he, can it um, uh, prevent it? So now the, the slaughter has developed a concrete solution to avoid, uh, you know, to, to make a pretreatment of the water before, of the blood before it goes uh, on the sea. With ECOFAN we've, we've been working with scientists, Senegalese scientists, and here in Aus with Australian scientists on the Great Barrier Reef topic to, uh, to popularize information studies you know, so, it's, so all the information we're given to the population are really robust. It allows the photographs to the photos to be stronger as a, a plea to uh, the protection to the nature. So today we will reveal the Australian photo for the prophecy. It's a photo and analysis and information. This is information to the population and then action. Infinite Scuba is a reality-based scuba diving game, so you do what real divers do. You look around for wildlife, identify wildlife, take pictures. We were lucky enough to partner with Dr. Sylvia Earle and Mission Blue, her ocean nonprofit. They help us make the game exciting and accurate, worthwhile for people who want to learn about the ocean. We picked the locations, the dive sites we did, because they're two of her hope spots. So she has 50 spots picked out around the world that are the remaining pristine marine environments. So you learn about the ocean and some of the environmental concerns that are circling around ocean issues right now to make it a really worthwhile activity for people who play the game. You can download the game at infinitescuba.com. It's available for Windows and Mac. It's also available um, in Windows Metro form on the Windows 8 store. My name is Andrew Skeet. I'm General Manager of Operations at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. And I've been there for about 15 years and have worked closely with the tourism industry over that time. I'm Tony Brown and I'm a tourism operator which has operated in the Whit Sundays for the last 12 years. Uh, presently I'm with TRAC which is a group called the Tourism Reef Advisory Council which works very closely with the Marine Park Authority. The relationships between Marine Park Authority and the tourism industry has evolved a lot those uh, last uh, couple of years. Could you explain us how? Back in the 1980s, tourism was growing very quickly and there was a real concern that it was the major threat to the Great Barrier Reef. At that time, we, took, we the authority, took a very strong interest in controlling the, uh, the industry and there was a lot of friction between the two. Since that time, we've both worked together because we've realised that uh, both of us are seeking the goal of a, a great Great Barrier Reef. The health of the reef is absolutely vital for our industry and hence it's important that we work with the Marine Park Authority to get that right. The Marine Park Authority did things like actually hire staff from the tourism industry so we truly understood what the industry needed and we also set up some advisory committees and Tony spoke uh, spoken of the uh, tourism advisory uh, group and that group along with the Marine Park Authority planned how we needed to manage tourism to protect the reef but also to make sure that the industry itself could make money, survive, and tell people about the Great Barrier Reef. We take out about two million people per annum to go out onto the reef, and our operators are very much engaged in, in passing across the interpretation and uh, information in regards to the reef's history and its importance, the ecosystem, so we have a, a vital role to play. And Marie, we certainly agree with that. Um, you know, it's not the job of the uh, the Marine Park Agency staff to be the best interpreters in the world. We think the tourism industry can do that better than us. In regards to the relationship, there doesn't need a huge amount of changes in that regard. It's how we can um, work symbiotically. How can we help the reef into the future? A lot of the, the influences that, that hurt the Marine Park are coming from land, land-based activities. Tourism has a place there we can help lobby and, and, and push that it's important, we're an important part of the economy and that's a re one of the parts that we can play in the, in the management of the marine park. Marie, I, I certainly agree with Tony there. The key threats to the Great Barrier Reef these days is, uh, doesn't include tourism, that's not a key threat anymore. The threats are changes in water quality, um, changes taking place on the land, uh, changes in coastal development, some remaining impacts of fishing and of course climate change coming over the top. If you're looking at improvements, that's where we can work together to make sure that the Great Barrier Reef is looked after into the future. So 
one of the really major uh, progress that we are doing in, in here in, uh, in Sydney is really that MPAs and all oceans issues are really on the top of the discussion. For example, in the Pavilion Ocean Plus, you can see that there is a lot of, of people gathering. It's one of the most lively pavilion you know, under the dome. And this shows that people are very interested by, by MPAs and or by, or by all marine issues. I think the, the communities are scientific and the protected area community now understand that uh, MPAs, marine protected areas, are quite important in the future. And I think they will be really nice that the participants to this Congress understand that we have to achieve in 2020 or beyond, but an important network of uh, marine protected areas. Impana, the International Marine Protected Area Network Agenda, is something that I really think we need right now to uh, meet our targets for marine protected areas by 2020. What we need to do is explore ways in which we can work together much more closely. And Impana is about building that strategy, that roadmap to help us do that. Here at the Parks Congress in Sydney, we're launching Impana with the French MPA Agency and other partners. Um, and it's really a call to action. Uh, we're already doing a lot uh, singly, but this is about coming together. So we will welcome governments, agencies and experts to see what they can do to facilitate more progress about the capacity needs for protected areas and really about where we should do more and work more closely together to really make that progress that we need. Thank you.